All right, everybody, welcome to the third episode with Buncho Talk with Patrick Bunch and friends. Today, I have two of my good friends. Fine, let's go ahead and say hello. Hello, people of the internet. And Zach. What's up? So, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the internet. Which is going to be big, because I got a lot. So, yeah, I'm actually going to hit it off with you, Zach. You're going to start us out. What are the pros right. and cons of the internet? Well, number one pro is uh, Netflix. Almost and Netflix. YouTube. Yeah. And YouTube. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with those two. Like, yeah. one of the best things on the PS4 is that, and the internet, well... You know what I'm saying? PS4, internet, whatever you got. You know, uh, just sit here and chill when there's nothing to do when you're really bored. A lot of people go on YouTube or Netflix. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'd say those are my pros. I mean, cons? Uh, I'd say people, you know, just being, being dumb. Mm. You know? Talking like trash over the internet. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not really uh It's not really cool. Mm -mm. Or like. I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's a waste of time. I mean, yeah, you get into arguments here and there, but there's like, there's no point in like threatening each other, you yeah. know. O over some little little <laughs> stuff. We'll try. We'll try to keep it PG. A few words slip. I don't really care. I'm not monetized yet. But, so, um, uh, is this going on your YouTube or yeah, what, man? Yeah, this is going on YouTube. I'm like, I have like 20 subscribers, which is, which is nice, not a lot, and I'm not going to brag. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's different having more, more than three people in a conversation that they're not in. True, true. I, I've, I've already um, gotten like three yeah, or four. I hateful comments and I'm like you know what I'm gonna enjoy being me and whoever um, you hate I'm... you can leave it in the comments I don't really care yeah those those are my pros and that. cons man yeah, yeah those are my pros and cons yeah that's about it bro you got nothing else yeah so finest what are your pros and cons of the internet I say one of the biggest pros I have about the internet is it gives, it gives people like quite in a way to actually expand into education to actually be able to have their education like eat right there right to like they can be able to get it like that's available for them yeah so like back then education was like not really easy like you had to like go through textbooks and everything but with the internet if you need to look something up for like something you're working on or whatever you can mm -hmm. just be able to search it up to like, try and find it yeah to find the information about it but one of like the one of the biggest one of the biggest cons of it is like how Zach said is the stupidity of people. Yeah. Because exactly. really using using it more as instead of as a, a tool to help in, in areas that would actually be useful in. Mm -hmm. They're used they're as Yeah. And for me, my my big pros and cons are my big my he, biggest pro is I don't really have that many kids in my neighborhood that are the same age as me. There's either you have the really old people or then you have the really young people around 6 to 8. There's not really too many kids our age around here. I don't know how old you are kind of. So yeah. Yeah. Then you're around the same age group. Yeah, and that was my con. Was you don't know... you Like, you can have voice chat and video chat all, all, all you want. But you don't really know who's behind the screen. You never know. 
me, me and Zach know each other personally, so we know each other. And we, we've seen each other's faces. But you don't know who's behind the screen and what they act like until you meet them in person. So you could be talking to someone that sounds like a, a six-year-old. So you talk more, you grow close friends. Turns out he's 46. Or she, I'm not going to do that. Let's, but you don't know who you're talking to. Which is definitely a big concern. Especially, especially for parents of young children that don't know any better. So... Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, on some occasions. Yeah. And... And see... It's just Pat Bunch. And the easiest way to... Find it is it's Pat Bunch, and just look for one of the videos with Buncho Talk. Not the first one. The first one didn't record properly. Yeah, I, I had a, I had a ham sandwich earlier, but so. And another thing I want to talk about, and I know it's a very touchy subject so I'm just gonna try not to get too many people triggered the whole situation with R. Kelly I'll just say it bluntly like can you still bump to R. Kelly nowadays without being judged like would you judge someone for bumping R. Kelly after what he's done Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, he he's he's great when it comes to music, but I I've never met the guy, and I don't want to spread any shame. But if the r rumors are true, and he's been denying it like he has. That's the definition of a pathological liar. Yeah. But the way he's been lying and lying and lying isn't right. Like, yeah, I, I get it if he's in, if he's actually innocent. Because sometimes, like, I'm not trying to... You know what, I'll keep that opinion to myself. Let's get off the subject matter before we go in too deep. Let's see. So. Uh, by the way, huh. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, MW. It's the third installment in the series, but the, the, oh, fine, we'll say it like this. The OG Modern Warfare is free on PSN. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, um, so... We got through the pros and cons of the internet. R. Kelly, we, we'll get out of that. But now I want to focus on something that's going to be original. YouTubers in general. You you have, that's, there's different types of YouTubers. There's the people that are in it for the money. And only post because of the money. 
And then there's people that are dying to get big and don't want the money. They just want their word to be spread out. So, I'm going to ask this question. You, you guys should know I'm on the side where I want to get big, but I don't want to make a whole lot of money. I want to try to keep bunch of talk as open to the public as I possibly can get it. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, no, because it's podcasting right now. And I'm... But how are you supposed to hear us? You can't hear us. Yeah, they can. Party. It's no, like they... party settings. Allow your voice to be shared. Okay. Yeah. So. That was probably the most awkward silence ever. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm kind of new to this, as you can tell. <laughs> Definitely a different that, streaming what? platform. Than I have it on uh, Always Allow. Yeah. Well, or Allow for Current Party. <laughs> Yeah, but, see, I know sometimes mics can be a little weird, so, let me, so, while we're on the topic of that, why don't, why don't you guys shoot me something we can talk about? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about fishing yesterday. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I want. Yee yee. Yeah, bro. But I want to talk about our our mechanic buddy. Who me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't you brag now. I know I, I'm good with them motors and all that. Don't you go bragging about me. No, not you. Oh, okay. Our, well, I'm a mechanic, our, so I'm our mean, Our kind of famous friend that was... Famous friend. That almost made it into the X game. R. Kelly? R. Kelly the mechanic? No, no, not R. Kelly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The one that was in right the now. dirt, that was, that uh, did a bunch uh, of stuff uh, with dirt bikes and was almost made it into the X game. If... Who, me? Yeah, our friend. The one that we always uh, go on the, we always go over to when we work on your dirt bike and we fit, put the chain on your bike there. Oh, Kyle. Yeah. Kyle. 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 Now, well, Kyle, he, he, the reason why he didn't, uh, go into motocross or super well he raced motocross but the reason why he didn't become a pro is because his dad uh had an accident and broke his neck and mm -hmm. his dad needed that money to get the surgery on his neck so uh that is why um that is why he didn't get to uh race pro but he, now, he, was, he, he was, was big he he was pro he was pro for sure but he wasn't X Games pro. He didn't make it that big. But he... He he was he was there. He was right there. And he yeah. was about to get his license. And uh, his dad, you know, gotten, you it, know... It was a freak accident. Fell and... Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, you know, stuff happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And I also heard about other people uh, trying to do that. And, uh, you know, this one guy raced and uh had an accident and couldn't mm -hmm. and couldn't race anymore man okay that was uh that was terrible yeah but finest could you invite miguel back real quick because oh, yeah. zach you're you may meet one of my friends that is a regular on my podcast i did my first podcast with him and he he's one of my best friends besides you and Brandon, all of my best friends. I got a lot of best friends, I just realized. 
Like, you, you only meet so many friends in your life, but not a lot of best friends. But I think I'm lucky. I've met a lot of really good friends that turned into best friends. One thing I definitely could say for a fact is just trying to keep, like, like, when it comes to friends and all that, like, try to keep the ones that you know you can definitely trust. Mm -hmm. For a fact, like, keep them close. The most. Yeah. But see, I, I go by the saying, the keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <clears throat> I just go by those sayings because I'm a military brat. My grandfather was in the military. My dad was in the military. My great-grandfather was in the military. My uncle was in the military. Just almost all my family's in the military. But... My grandfather's in the military. Yeah. In the Vietnam. Vietnam. But um Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been I, I know a lot of talk. I mean a lot of talk with Impulsive. It's one of the biggest podcasts in the world right now. I'm not saying I'm trying to kinda slide into Logan Logan Paul's DMs and try to kinda get our name on there. I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> but um I actually entered you, you know Jake Paul's giving away Rainbow, right? Which is his I guess Ford. I don't really watch that stuff, Patrick, I'm sorry. You well, I... you do though, because yeah. that's pretty gay. No offense to uh, gay people out there. And and all uh, and all, Jake Paulers. I can't control. Jake Paulers. Yeah. Uh, but so he's giving away Rainbow, which is his car. But I've entered it to win the con, to win it. So if I win it, I may be talking to Jake Paul. But uh, that's just a big wish of mine. But you know, shit I don't know why you out. have set yourself up like this, Patrick. Yeah, I don't know either. You know what? I always dream big, but sometimes I feel like I dream too big. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it... But uh, yeah, man. I I I. I mean, I guess. I mean, it's worth a try. You know, gambling. Mm -hmm. You're, it's, it's just seven bucks to enter and buy some merch. I mean, it's, it's not hard to enter. But, of course, there's restrictions and all that where you have to be 18. which Or have the help of an adult. But you know what. Yeah. Um. But anyway. Alcohol. Your stance on it. With alcohol, like a lot of people seem to be a little bit too easy with alcohol. Mm. Reasons why? Because I think if it's all about just like the party and all that, like yeah, it's it's like <clears throat> like like here, like people who drink alcohol, like they go crazy, like they just like drink it once in a while, but like only like well, I mean, uh, twice a week or. If you're gonna drink every day, at least uh, drink with a meal, because uh, it reduces your alcohol level yeah. a lot. And, so, and bread. You want to have bread with your meal. Something. Just any. Just, well, just anything. I mean, you could you could eat a snack with a beer. You know, like a potato chips or mm. Doritos. I mean, one beer is not really gonna um, affect you that much. Unless you have a very yeah, exactly, low especially with the meal. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, all you women out there, don't go drinking like that. You know, be yep. careful because there's uh there's bad people in yep. bars. Yep. That like Mo to uh, do bad things. Yeah. So I, uh, I just want to point that out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I actually met someone that was roofied before. And well, let's not talk about yeah, that now. Yeah. 
We'll probably get Let's into not that. talk about that. We'll probably get into that and, and probably get demonetized, so we aren't. But, um... So... <clears throat> have you guys watched, um, the new, St like, Irwin docu- or the new Steve Irwin series? That... But it's without Steve Irwin, but it's his son and daughter and his wife at their zoo. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. But I'm in love with that show. I have watched it from beginning to end every day. <laughs> I always try to watch new clips that are out. But there's one animal that I love there. And that is the blind tiger. I forget the name off the top of my head. But the tiger is completely bl blind. And it goes throughout its day by constantly giving out small roars to find its toys. And to find treats and stuff like that. And I, I was blown away because I also read the story about a blind man who would ride his bike to work every day. And he would <coughs> click his mouth and use echolocation to for, to go from his house to his work every day. Okay. That, that was just something that piqued my interest and wanted to talk about that real quick. But it's amazing how... God, I gotta think of words. Words aren't my thing today. But, um, it's amazing how humans work, if you think about it. Like, with disabilities. Blind people will use echolocation. People have invented whole languages just by motions <coughs> of the hands and arms. And body language. Whole languages. Yep. With that, speaking of blind people, of like blind people, uh -huh. not, people like who are blind aren't exactly 100% blind. They can't see. They can't 100% see nothing. Actually, yeah, they can. They don't see anything. When you're totally blind, no. mm hmm. Like people aren't exactly a hundred percent blind. Yeah. Like they can't, they can't just see. They can't see well, I mean, I mean, some people are. Uh. And that's complete like, blind. Like, no, I went, like when I was younger, like, like some six blind or seven. Still be able to see, at least see. Yeah. When I was like eight or seven years old, I uh, I went to this daycare with uh, the YMCA. If you guys know what that is, mm -hmm. and uh, this girl was blind. Like, completely blind. Like, they had to, like, literally, like, walk her around because she couldn't see anything. And what she would do is she would untie knots, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. Just to, uh, you know, I guess, just, so, yeah, I don't so know, untie knots. Like I mean, level, they're, like, different levels of blindness. Yeah. That's the thing, which is why I say that. There's color blind, like, which means you can't see color. Not like not 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 that kind of blind. I'm talking about like actual like being blind. Blind, yeah. But there's like different actual things to that that you can blind. Mm. Because like I said, Molly Burke was the was the blind dude. What I said, she mm. is blind, yes, but she's still able to see light. So mm. you see like light will show up in figure and like different, especially if it's putting like different like. And figures and all that. Mm -hmm. You don't see that. But other than that, you can't really see anything else. Yeah. But. <clears throat> which is honestly what I find actually one cool part about. Mm -hmm.
uh, thing. I remember there was a company that made glasses for 64 uh, people who were colorblind. Uh, he let them to color. So, yeah. Like, some people can see light, and then some people can't see anything. I'm talking about the people who can't see anything. Is what I'm talking about. It amazes me how, how they've... Have evolved, like how they've learned to overcome their disabilities and become their own person, almost. If that makes sense. So, let's see. All right, now, now we get into our fun part. Scariest experience doesn't have to be paranormal or anything like that. Just your scariest experience in life. Can be paranormal. Not. I'd say last year, Patrick, you remember when I messed up my hand. Oh, yep. I thought uh, I would never ride again, ride my dirt bike again because... I like split it right down the middle near arteries and tendons and stuff. So mm -hmm. I thought I would break a tendon and never be able to use my hand again. And yeah. they said I was lucky. So thank thank the Lord for that. Yeah. For real. That was that was like really scary. Yeah. Cause that's all I know how to do. Like I've been riding since I was four years old. Mm. Nothing's ever changed. And I met Kyle when I was riding uh, down at that neighborhood. I was just cruising around, and uh, mm -hmm. he was out there on his dirt bike. And I was like, and he stopped me. And he's like, dude, where are you from, man? Like, I haven't seen, I haven't seen you riding around here before. And it's like, yeah, I've been riding for a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. So. And it's. <clears throat> For me, it would have to be the time that I, I completely shattered my growth plate in my ankle. Mm. So, I was going down, I was lawnboarding, still learning how to lawnboard. And I was like, you know what? No, he, he's good at it. He's gotten way better at it. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but when I broke my I ankle, I was complete, complete right. trash. I was dookie. True. So I, well, I gave you some tips. Yeah, but... No. That was after I shattered my growth plate. But, as I was saying before being rudely inter interrupted, so I was going down a hill. And it wasn't it wasn't one of those baby hills where we, you go down and you slow down. <laughs> this was like an extreme hill where it's almost 15 degrees down. And for like 20 feet, and it has a huge curve at it. I was like, you know what, I'll master this. I'll get this done today. Because before I was, I was going down a slightly smaller hill, not not as much speed as that one. And I didn't know how to board slide or stop at all. I didn't know how to slow down besides to st step off the board. So I step off the board. I'm going too fast. I got speed wobbles. I step off. Next thing I know, my ankle folds from underneath me. And I'm like, oh, I just broke my ankle. So... I lay in the road for about two minutes, and I just remember the feeling of, I'm gonna die laying in this road. A car is gonna come, and it's gonna hit me, and I'm gonna die. So, I finally got up the strength to get up and walk on my broken ankle. Like, full pressure on the ankle, completely walking. And I walked up to a complete stranger's house and was like, Hey, I think I broke my ankle. Do you think I could get some ice and call my mom? So, they gave me the phone, they let me call my mom, and I go in, and I'm going to put it very simply, it was completely trashed. There was bone fragments everywhere. So, I went to see a specialist, they put a cast on it, thought everything was going to be okay. No, I get into school, I'm, I'm just getting back into school, I'm on a little knee cart, and... 
I'm going down the hallway, and of course I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I'm flying down the hall on this little knee cart. Wait, wait, was that at school? Yep, yep. When I can, when it can, when we learned it was completely shattered, it was at school, because one of the I was, I skipped class a lot, and one of the teachers walked out right in front of me, so I went to do a sharp turn on the knee on the ankle that I busted, and I stepped off, and I heard my ankle go. And I was like, oh, my ankle, it's gone. And Why would thing, you do that? Why would you step off? You're not I supposed to be flying around and doing things. You're an idiot. You didn't. Yeah, you did. You just said she stepped off. Yeah, because I wouldn't go into the turn and I fell off, <laughs> if that makes more sense. But I put my foot down oh. and stopped, you know. You yeah, don't put your foot down, man. When you fall, you want to put something down to break the fall. It's... Well, use your other foot. Well, I was falling on this side, on the on my left side. I couldn't quickly swing my body around and put down my right knee cart. On the knee cart. On the knee cart. <laughs> on, the knee... <laughs> on the knee scooter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the I was knee shredding. scooter shredding, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if they would have put down a rail, I would have fifty fifty off the rail. <laughs> I would have I would have um... knee slid off that rail. <laughs> and kept on going. Oh. But so, anyways, I completely shattered my ankle. That's the point. I knew my ankle was done. So I tried to get into a wheelchair, and the school said at the time I could get into the wheelchair anytime I needed to. So I'm I got the wheelchair going down the hall, and a teacher stops and says, "You can't use that." And I'm like, why? I have permission, and I have a doctor's note saying I can. I and they're like, still, you can't use that. You aren't fully disabled. And I'm like, look at my ankle. It's in a cast. And look, there's a hole on the bottom. Put two and two together, please. And <laughs> no, they they made me get out and get back Who was to it? the knee cart. Who do you think? Miss Snyder? Yeah. No, it wasn't Miss Snyder. Yeah, it was. It had to be somebody else. Nope, it was Miss Snyder. Really? Yep. When? Why did she say that to you? Because apparently I I didn't have permission to be using it. Even though the the other teacher, which I try not to name names so much, Who? said that I could, Miss Meyer. Miss Myring? Yeah. You know, she's still there, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about visiting. I'm not sure. But anyways, I get, so I get mad. I roll, I open up the front doors, and I sit out on a bench. And I had this... Don't get me wrong, miss. My therapist was an awesome person. But what she said pissed me off. And she Ew. said, well, you can't be touching stuff that isn't yours, and it belongs to the school. So I picked up the knee cart and I, like, threw it five, even though I wasn't strong at the time, I only threw it, like, five feet. I ended up scratching it up. That was all I could do. I wanted to break it so bad and say, ha, huh, now I have to use a wheelchair. But, um, yeah. So, I finally go in to see the specialist. I'm back at the specialist office. Oh, and they're like, well, now we have to get our operating specialist in here. And I was so, so lucky to have him. He was one of the top doctors in Maryland for ankle reconstructive surgery. So he went in, got, I think it was seven bone fragments out from the left side of my left ankle. Now, see, I broke it on the right side, so it was completely on the other side. I had a fragment in the middle of my foot. And that was a bone sliver that they said if I walked on that foot again, it probably would have cut a artery. And then, of course, a main it break. So I don't have a growth plate. I have two screws in the plate in my ankle. Mm. Yeah. So, Finus, go ahead and hit us up with your scariest life experience.
finest. It's your turn. Uh, your scariest to life experience, either paranormal or non-paranormal. Just your scariest feeling or your scariest time in your life. Patrick, are you near my house? Yeah, I'm in. I was in your house. Oh. Yeah. A lot of the time in life, like, you know, like I wasn't really, like, showed much fear. Mm hmm That's right, you told everyone you don't really get scared too easy. Yeah, like, I know you did was, was when they actually get, like, scared, like. But if there was the ever a time, time, what would that time be? I think the only time where I actually felt fear, but not, I was like, what pumping fear, but more so to like, wanting to have, have it already kind of mm -hmm. fear, was that one time when I was younger and I was on the Ferris wheel with my dad at a couple of houses came by. Mm -hmm. And I was on the Ferris wheel because I was like, the name of the guy, and I was going to expect him to be so high. Mm. We stopped way high up. I felt down immediately. I just wanted to hurry up and get down to the ground because yeah. I was just a little kid. And being up that high, I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not having this. I do not want to be up here anymore. Yeah. But ever since, ever since then, I have like, not not like an irrational fear, but more like, the fear, like not wanting to be here anymore. Yeah. So then, like, because of that as well, I, I even like not even wanted to even be in your roller coasters as well. Mm. Just because of the height. Especially with the fact that there was one you know, over at Six Flags. I was seeing the King of Ka was go straight up high into the sky, and I said, "No, I am not even going anywhere near that." Yeah. See, I just completely said height is a big no for me. Mm. But other than that, like, it doesn't make me sound like any act after fear. 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 Yeah. Fear. <laughs> fear. <laughs> so, how do I said that wrong? Yeah. <laughs> but. So, I remember. We'll start to go into some weird stuff here. So I was with this one girl. I'm not going to name names because that's not nice. And she would always call me each night saying that there's someone outside of her house. That I, I better drive up there. So every night, of course, I don't have a car at the time. Still don't have a car. Need a car. But, um, so anyways, I walk up there. No one's out there. And I walk into the backyard. And there's literally something standing in the yard. And I'm like, oh, let, let me go check this out. Of course, i am never experienced anything paranormal before. And thank God it wasn't paranormal. She, her, she didn't realize that her parents had targets outside that looked like deer and bear standing up on its hind leg. And what she was getting scared of was a bear standing up. You know those, Zach, you probably know, the 3D targets that look like the real animal. For, like, archery and stuff. But her parents had one of those. And it scared her every night. She never learned. So what was... I'm, I'm gonna ask this. What was the weirdest scene that you ever got freaked out about? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like, that is actually a hard one. Patrick, hmm. you got a bed? Yeah. Alright, come back to the house and... 
I'm Sleep. in your house. Are you? I don't yeah. see you. Which house is it? I don't know. The one with... It's a Zach room and Mason room. Where's that at? I don't know, but you build a mine or something. I'm standing out on the patio now. It's probably one of your old houses. Yeah. Let me let me pull up my map real quick and figure yeah. out where you're But at. uh Zach, what was your weirdest scene you have ever gotten freaked out about? Uh when I was riding my dirt bike and there was a um there's a like fox mm -hmm. and it like it ran off. Right, so I shut off my bike to, to you know, to see where it went, mm -hmm. and it circled around and came behind me. It was like three feet away from me. Mm. I cranked up my bike and it took off. Yeah. So I I kind of just kind of just rode around to scare it off and it just I don't know, I've never seen it since. Yeah. Now, see, my weirdest experience actually turned into fear. So when I was younger, about five or six i was staying up at my aunt debbie's house now she lives in a very wooded area and so i was up there and they have raccoons and all of that of course me being six i had to, i woke up at in the middle of the night only had a flashlight and she, i was sleeping up in the loft so i come down to use the bathroom and she has these two walk-in doors. And in one of the walk-in doors was a raccoon. Swear to God, I threw the flash like 10 feet up in the air. Ran up the steps. Luckily, I didn't piss myself. Although, I was very <laughs> close to pissing myself. And ever since then, I've always hated raccoons. Don't like seeing them. If they're nearby, I won't go. I feel so, you there. Yeah. Finest, what is... Been there, what, done that. What's the weirdest scene that you've been freaked out about? <clears throat> the thing I've been freaked out about... Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Zach, well, you're a whole bop away from me. Try to, try to start walking, running over here. I don't know. Um, I'm in a very... I'm not freaked out yeah. or weirded out by anything. Yeah, it's people. You never been freaked out by anything. Yeah, like I never really been freaked out. Hmm. Okay. Like, you've been walking in the woods and there, and you look at a tree and it looks like someone, but it isn't anyone. It's just a tree. That's happened to me before. <laughs> Nothing of that yeah, sort. Yeah, same. What? That's a thing, because I've never really gone outdoors, so I can't really say anything from outside would freak me out. Because mm -hmm. I've always been indoors, always wanted to be outside, like, to mm -hmm. be exploring and all that. But again, because I was a child who always had, who always had any needs and all that, so I couldn't really do much about that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I've only just stayed my time inside. Man. Patrick, I need some help on this stuff. Yeah, give me a minute. I'm right now going up a mountain. I'm probably gonna die. Just to let you know. I see Don't die. Water down here. Uh, I can't see. Okay, so I'll I'll just try to take the fast but short way. All right, there's. You know what? I can't talk. But, so. We talked about our paranormal stuff yesterday. If you want to listen to that podcast, that's episode one and two. So, let's get something that we can really talk about. Any ideas? No, this sounds something. Sweet. I think I think we should wrap this podcast up. I say it was a pretty good podcast. Well, we aren't nearly near the time we normally finish. It's not. I don't want it to be a short podcast. But, um, I mean, that wasn't short. It's been about an hour, bro. It's only been 44 minutes. I said in about an hour. Okay. Do you know what about an hour means? Yes, I know what about an hour means. Yeah, about an hour. Okay. 
Close. Close. Button. What? So, me and Zach are from county. Like, the suburbs. And you're from the city, right? I'm... I was from mostly, like, around, like... What city is he from? Area. I mostly was from, like, sur like suburban areas, because, again, I was born in New York, and from, like, I'm from Long Island, New York, and all that, so... Mm -hmm. I mostly lived in, like, small, like... Because when I first was growing up, I was growing up in, like, a small town. Like, yeah. Everything was, like, pretty close by and all that, so... Yeah. And then, like... I eventually, like, as I got older, like, we started moving in areas, and I wasn't really quite happy with doing that. But then eventually, I got said, you know what, it has to happen, it got done, so I let it be. Yeah. So, we all, everyone has their own, their favorite video game, or their favorite thing to do. What's yours? <laughs> My actual favorite game at the moment is actually between Siege and Warframe. Yeah. See, we all know Miguel's favorite. It's that's between Siege and Wildlands. Mm -hmm. Zach, what's your favorite game at this moment? Or thing to do? Red Dead. Red Dead or... Red Dead? That's it, Red Dead. Just straight up Red Dead. Yeah. See, I'm I'm not on yeah, that. that. Red Dead. I can't really complain yeah. against that because Red Dead is a good game. Mm. Nobody's ever played the first one now. I feel like I'm the only one that's played the first one. No, I played the first one. And traumatic stories that had it happened yesterday. Let's talk about yesterday. Last night, yeah. I pulled out an ingrown toenail. That was really bad. Mm. And she's doing good now. I, I almost don't want to go um, on with, with that conversation. <laughs> well, have you ever had an ingrown toenail? Yeah. But I've never learned how to properly get them out. So, um... now I t Like, now I take screwdrivers and just kind of pry them out, which is nasty. No, 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 no. That's disgusting. Yeah. You take a, a sewing pen, right? Straight mm. up metal. Take a glove and heat that mo up, okay? Mm -hmm. And you kind of take your finger and bend, or first try to dig it out when it's mm -hmm. not heated up. Get enough slack on it. Then you, uh, then you take take the heat up pen and kind of just singe some of the excess skin off, yeah. and then take your teeth and just pull it out. That's what I do. Yeah. Just rip it, man. It'll hurt, but it's not gonna be that bad. I promise. But yeah, if but I what I would want to do is maybe have like once a week we take something that one of our subscribers submit and turn it into a podcast. Like send us your questions that you want answered. We'll probably talk about them no matter how hard or touchy they are. Like we ha we touched on R. Kelly. How much more touchy can you get? But, yeah, send send us your questions. Once a week, we'll pick out a question, and we'll kind of go with it. But, one of, like, everyone has their own preference on inside or outside. Me, I, I love walking anywhere. It doesn't really matter. For anywhere from walking through the woods, riding my bike, kayaking. Um, anything outdoors is my, my type of thing. And then when, when it's too cold, Same like, here. like it is now, I hate being outside. Do not, don't try to even talk me into going outside. I won't go. Nope. Unless there's something to go for. Yeah. Right. Right. Like if you, if, if you, and if it's snowing and you say, let's go, bo let's board. I'm like, all right, I'm down. Yeah, for real. That's different. Yeah. Patrick, what kind of mountain were you on? 
um, I don't know. I was in the snow biome. But, uh, my, where are you? I see an ocean. Is there sand? Yeah. Alright, come towards there, because I'm over here. Like, look at your map. Um, no, you are, f you're off the map. But, so. Well, can you, I still, I see you. I don't see you. I'm blind. We all know this. Or, I'm not blind. I, I just don't comprehend very well, if that puts it into better perspective. Well, try to head towards me. Take a boat. Take oh, a okay. boat and try to head towards me on the water, because that's how I got here in the first place. Just take a... I don't have a boat. You gotta make one, Pat. Okay. So make one. I am, but, um, I try not to play video games so much when I'm podcasting. What a costume. And as you guys will learn, I have different accents for different words. One of Zach's... Hello, favorite... my name is Kevin. I may I help you today? I would like to show you a no, vacuum no, cleaner. No, no, no. Bad Zach. <laughs> Bad Zach. We aren't, we aren't that type of people. But I have... One of <laughs> Zach's favorite accents to make fun of me is when I say Florida. Florida. Or chocolate. Yeah, or chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Yeah, I want to buy some chocolate. <laughs> what about? I think I think hot dog also. Hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> None of that cringy stuff, please. Why? How do you make a paddle? Oh, you don't make a paddle. You just make a boat. You just make the oh oh yeah shovel. Wow, I'm quite disappointed in myself. You should be Pat. You've been a bad boy. Very very bad boy. I'm making oh, that, a farm over that, here. That, that, did I say turn right here? You've been a very, very lucky boy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So. Yeah. Well, this has been the most. I, I would have to say this is the most awkward episode of Bunch of Talk yet. It's for sure. We need to plan this out better, is what I can say about critiquing myself. And so for for me right now is I'm just kind of testing the waters right now. Like I don't want to be. Yeah. You remember that one time we went fishing, Pat, and caught that huge ass catfish? Do you still have that picture? I do have that picture, and I will text it to you. So, we we were oh, fishing, amazing. and I know we talked about fishing yesterday, but me and, uh, I haven't really talked about the times me and Zach have gone fishing. We don't really catch too much, but when oh, we do, funny. they're monsters. Well, at least for me. Yeah. No, no, no. I've caught monsters with you. You remember I caught that huge-ass catfish, and it almost spooled me? You remember on the, uh, on the, um, right on... Right at Jobtown Point Park, it was like yeah. fucking pull and drag, and yeah. it got off. Yeah. That was crazy. I was that well, was Well, there's old. a fishing Dude, spot fish, I'll have to take it you to. It was close to. It was it was pulling. Mm -hmm. He I don't was see. pulling hard. Yeah, but so one of as Zach knows, I I'm a lure type of guy, but when I used live bait. I try to get the top of the line minnows. I, I don't like using worms. Minnows are what you use. And you almost and you almost lost that fish if I didn't tell you what to do. Yeah. You're about to break to, off. Yeah, dude. I literally had to get into the water and 
me. Yeah, you were too scared to grab the big old thing. I was like, dude, get your ass in there and grab it. Yeah, because oh, I, I, awesome. I, I never... I'm... You never caught anything like that? Yeah, or got in and out by myself. Like, I, di I didn't know you literally put your hand inside of a catfish's mouth when you pulled it out. I thought it was Dude, like... he got off right there at the end, dude. I know. And you were about to break that fucking line, because you yeah. were literally fucking forcing him in. I was like, dude, just let him run. Let him run. You're forcing him. That's how you put them. That's how they put on the fight. Yeah, but you're you're if you're fighting with him like really hard, you're just pulling, and both of you guys are pulling. That fish is gonna break your line, dude. Your line was fucked up after that, dude. Yeah. Your line was trashed. Yeah. You didn't I even can't... have the right line on there. Yeah, I was only using ten pound. No, my uncle. We were out there in the cold and we were line. fishing. Yeah, my we're, uncle. We're swore on 10 pound line he would only let me use 10 pound line even when i used this one lure that i lost up in new york rip that lure is it expensive it's like a 22 dollar lure zach knows about it it's my sunfish one my savage tech my savage tech real real d3d best lure ever $22 was expensive as hell for it, but worth it. But, um, so anyways, Zach, can you hear me? Just making sure y'all can hear me. Yep, we hear you. Alright, so, me, me, me and Zach have been smoking for a while, and that's one of the things I wanted to get on yesterday talk about yesterday but I had friends who didn't smoke and I'll be the only one talking about it so Zach if you were to if it was easy to quit smoking would you do it for me I, I would quit as soon as I could It just has ruined my lung ca capabilities. I used to be able to run and run and run. But now that I've picked up smoking, I'm no longer able to run as far and as fast as I would like to. <coughs> yeah, so, smoking will do that to you. That's, mm -hmm. that's why I need to be careful of it. Yeah, so, so if you ever, if somebody tries to peer pressure you into smoking, slap them in the face and run. <laughs> is the best advice I can give you. But you probably shouldn't go with my logic, because I've gotten myself into a lot of trouble doing it that way. And then if you make no money like I do, you end up picking up people's butts. And smoking them. Which is nasty. You should never do that. But anyways. As I was saying, if, if I could go back to when I first started smoking and never pick up a cigarette, yeah, I would do it. So, if any of you are struggling with cigarettes... There, there's a way to quit. It's just hard. Uh, I haven't been able to do it. I've been trying for many, many years, but have never been able to do it. Um. So yeah, if you could quit, or if you're, or or if you're even thinking about starting to smoke, don't do it. Save yourself the trouble. But um, other than that. Yeah, this is most definitely one of the most awkward <gasps> bunch of talks. And will probably be the only uh, awkward bunch of talk. So. I've just been. I've just been here on my phone just drawing. Uh. -huh. So I've been a little bit distracted. Yeah. And see. The. Cr 
it, it's just been crazy today. I've run and run and run all day. And I get in just to do another podcast. I love doing it. Believe me, I love doing it. But when it's when it's awkward like this, it's, it doesn't really feel right. But um, anyway, that's been a bunch of talk with the, a bunch of I think it's just probably because they're all, like, distracted with different things. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, that's been Bunch of Talk with Patrick Bunch and friends. I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.